Welcome back. Today I'm going to be replacing the hydraulic pressure feed line from the hydraulic pump to the rear axle of this Ford 3000 tractor and more importantly the fitting that actually threads into the rear end of this tractor. Normally this is not a wear item. Uh, the fitting that threads in, the compression style fitting, was cross-threaded into this larger nut on this particular tractor and there's no way to get it to stop leaking after that happens. Now, these lines do get chewed up over time from the, uh, in my opinion, pretty poorly designed compression fitting setup that they have on them. So, so in this case, the line itself, the end where this, this, the end where the compression fitting clamps onto is a little bit chewed up and I don't think I'm gonna get a good seal on that and this nut itself is actually screwed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on changing this fitting and line on this Ford 3000. Couple things to note while I'm installing this line. One, it did not come painted, I had to do that. And two, I'm, it came with these plastic or rubber ends on it. I'm, I'm leaving those on while I install this so I don't knock a bunch of dirt and junk in here. And that actually went into place pretty dang easy. So that's up about where it's supposed to be. I've gotten fairly good at putting the pump side back together while doing that. So I'm actually gonna start under the tractor first. So now what I'm gonna do, well, paint hardened on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this plastic cover which I left on when I painted it, install my nut onto the line, and make sure that the line is protruding through the actual rubber part of the nut. Bring it up into place. And this should thread in by hand. If this won't thread in by hand, you are probably cross-threading it, and then you'll have to end up doing what I just did. Once you get it started, I'm actually going to leave it a little bit loose for right now until I get the other side started as well. Now I'm out of frame on this one, but there is a little rubber piece that I'll show you later around one of your mounting spots. You got to make sure that that is around the eight tube in the appropriate way. So what I'll do is I'll take my hydraulic line and the, or the hydraulic fitting nut and its rubber piece and slide the nut and the rubber piece over top of the line. And then just like on the rear end, you've got to make sure this starts by hand. All right, I've knocked the camera out of here twice now. But what you're going to have to do, this is not going to be quick and easy. I've, I've done this particular one several times, and I still have to fight with it. But you want to make sure that you're not cross-threading anything. So this should be able to start by hand. Once you get that, you're going to tighten this up with the wrench. Again, I'm gonna shut the camera off and get it out of the way because I just keep knocking it off of here. But you get the idea. Start this nut by hand, tighten it up with the wrench. Now I've got the upper side tight, 
So I'm actually going to push, I'm going to tighten up this side now. But before I do that, I'm going to kind of take a look at it. And this actually slides in and out pretty easily. Make sure that that tube is in far enough to where the fitting is actually going to bite. And I'm going to do this one from the top side where I think it's a little easier to get at. Alright, and that is now tight. I am going to start this before I put the brake pedals back on. But before I do that, I'm going to replace these bolts on the center of the tractor. Now make sure that you get both of these started before you tighten either one. I'm also going to reinstall this bolt here and the bracket because they kind of hold the line in place. Now there is this rubber, this rubber isolator. Make sure you get it onto the proper side of the line. I'm going to hook up my power steering lines, which I had to disconnect, and then I'm going to fire this thing up and test the hydraulics before I actually put the brakes back together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this thing up, which it's cold, it hasn't been run, so it might crank for a second. I should not need to bleed this hydraulic pump because we have not disturbed the suction side. The uh, pressure side is totally dry and it's probably going to take a little while to work the air out of this system, but it should fire up and within a few seconds I should be able to run the loader and the three point. Now, if you did not have any leaks, we will begin to reassemble. Um, the first washer goes in on the parking brake. The paws go back. Uh oh. Then our outer washer. And the E-clip, sometimes it takes a little bit more pressure than what I really want to put on my hand. So again, I grab my screwdriver, just pop it in. Next, we will grab our 
inboard or left brake. Make sure you get the pedal above the running board to start. And there's a keyway on the front side here that you'll have to line up as you slide this in. You'll just kind of work this. Now I'm just going to very, I'm going to hold up on the front to take tension off of here, and I'm just going to very lightly tap it in. Okay. Now that that's in place, we can grab our spring. The closed up end of it, or the smaller end, goes up onto the bottom of the running board. Again, grab with my spring tool, aka needle nose vice grips. Hold up on the brake pedal and clip that around. You really don't need to totally remove this bolt, but I did. So I'll put that back in. That's still a 5 8. Tighten that up. So since this is off, I'm just going to put a couple pumps of grease on here. And since you're already filthy from doing this job, just go ahead and wipe that around our slide point for the brake arm. Now we grab our right side brake, line it up. This one will fall until it catches the running board. The reason is it's not hooked up yet. So I'll grab the spring for this side. My spring tool. Lift up on the brake. Spring on. Grab our pin for the rear brakes. Reinstall that. Reinstall the cotter key or cotter pin that holds it or a new one. This one's not very old, so I'm just reusing it. Bend our cotter pin a little bit so it won't fall out. Okay. And that's it. I will point out. I do really think there's supposed to be a giant E-clip on here, but it can't really fall off. So I'm gonna leave it. Um, maybe I'll come back and put one of those on later. The pressure side hydraulic line on this tractor is now on. And the part that I didn't show you off camera is the fact that the pump end of it blew apart several times. Now down on the tractor end or the trans end, I used the Ford New Hall and fitting that came with that fitting that I bought new. Uh, the other end, I got some readily available aftermarket ones. Now the first thing that I noticed here is that this is not a one inch like the old one. It is slightly bigger. It's an inch and a, inch and a sixteenth or inch and an eighth. It doesn't matter. It's slightly bigger. The next thing, these rubber inserts. In the beginning of the video, I said that these are 
I don't remember how I worded it, but made it sound like I'm not a huge fan. By the end of this video, I am now willing to say that these are the worst hydraulic fittings I have ever had to deal with. Um, the aftermarket ones don't fit. The threading's wrong. That's probably what happened to the other one because it had an aftermarket nut on it and it probably didn't really thread right. And that's, and it was that as much as anything, as much as it cross threaded, it's just wrong. So I didn't try an aftermarket nut in that new Ford fitting. Maybe they changed it. I know that the hydraulic pump on this one has a C5 part number, which in Ford land means it's a 65 casting. I don't think it's ever been changed. The reality is that even though this is a 73, if they never updated that casting, they may still run the C5 serial number. Um, so yeah. I highly recommend if you're doing this that you buy two of these compression style fittings from Ford and that's probably your best bet but even at that this is just a crappy design uh, so whatever uh, I guess that's it that's how to install the high side pressure line for the hydraulic system on a Ford 3000 tractor Thanks for watching, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you later.